morning, everyone. Welcome to Lewisburg United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Tim. Hi, I'm Rev Bev. We um, would love to invite you to our final Christmas cafe on Tuesday. We have a worship experience that includes a pizza bar, so life is good. On Tuesday night at 6 o'clock, would love for you to come join us for an Advent study together and to enjoy a meal together. Yeah, someone told me that they liked the Christmas Cafe so much that they wanted to make a suggestion that come uh, February, we uh, have it again and call it Groundhog Cafe. I said, it's an idea, we'll think about it. Uh, we also want to just uh, mention to you that uh, the church is planning for some uh, three special Christmas Eve services here at 5, 7, and 11. The one at 5, tell us a little bit about that, Bev. It's going to have a little more focus on children. And we're asking that all the families bring their children because we're going to have a live nativity scene. And so the children will have an opportunity if they come about 4.30, just a little bit early, meet here in the sanctuary, and they can dress up as one of our characters. We have costumes galore. And then the families can come and enjoy um, Christmas Eve together and watch the children be part of a live nativity. Sounds wonderful. Hey, um... Bev, I see around the church there's uh, some pictures of a goat on a rock. Uh, what's that about? There are flyers all over um, the church building. We're having a family retreat for um, adult women and men and children and teens. Everyone's invited. Um, the retreat happens here. It's a weekend of renewal. And um, so we hope you can be part of that. It's in January. And you get to sleep in your own bed, which is the best part. But we'll come together and worship throughout the weekend. So take a note and look at the, um, look at the flyers that are posted around and see if that would fit with your family. Today is the last Sunday that you can order a poinsettia for our Christmas services here. And so if you would, just put that in the offering uh, into the offering plate today, uh, and it will be a part of our uh, celebration. We, um, we're glad you're here, and uh, for those of you who didn't make it out through the snow last weekend, the choir did a great job last Sunday. <laughs> oh, that's right, you weren't here. Uh, no, we decided this is such a special presentation that they have that last week, uh, by this time, we had eight inches of snow on the ground. And so they're here this Sunday to bring this uh, wonderful presentation to us. And for that, we are so grateful. Would you take a moment now to stand and greet one another? Welcome each other to church. As we gather back together, we take a moment to focus on the Advent wreath. So as we sing our Advent song, we are going to allow the Vance family to come and light the candles for today. So let us celebrate through the lighting of the Advent wreath.
forward and join me for children's time. Jesus, and thank you for Christmas. Help me to remember on that very special day there were lots of animals and people who came to celebrate the birth of Jesus. I love you, and I know you love me too. Amen. Amen. All right, so I have your stickers, and he has your doorknobs, and then you need to go collect the noisy offerings. you got a lot to do this morning. Ready? All right, here we go. Have a great day. The cans are to the left and the right. Would you send them down to the center as the children come to uh, gather them up? We use the noisy offering to help people right here in our community who are maybe on hard times. We thank uh, the children for helping us every Sunday with the noisy offering. Every week, someone stops by the church in need of some assistance, and these, uh, these gifts in these little cans help those persons uh, in their time of need. We hope that by now, uh, quite a few of you, if not all of you, have received in the mail a letter from the church with the Christmas greeting, uh, with a Christmas offering envelope, and with a commitment card for next year. We hope that uh, you will know that we've fallen a little behind this year in our commitment to the uh, Conference of Benevolence. And so everything in that Christmas offering envelope that you received in the mail, which will also be inserted in this, uh, the Christmas Eve worship bulletin, every bit of that will go to help us fulfill our commitment to our Conference Benevolence and our missions. Also, uh, for those of you who have not yet heard, 
a very faithful and loving member of our congregation, Curtis Metter, uh, passed away suddenly and unexpectedly. He was out feeding his birds on Friday, and he had a uh, heart attack. He was being transferred uh, by uh, air flight to uh, Charleston Area Medical Center and in flight suffered a second massive heart attack and passed. Curtis's service will be held here at the church on Monday tomorrow at 1 o'clock and we pray for Sandy, uh, I'm sorry, Susan and for their whole family um, during this time. Would you bow with me in a word of prayer as the ushers come forward now to receive the offering? Lord, we ask your blessing on these offerings that we receive in the life of this church, that they will truly help people, both near and far. We ask a special prayer today for the family of Curtis Matter. We thank you for Curtis's life, and we hope that we will celebrate it, because we know you've opened your arms to welcome him home. And now, Lord, would you bless this choir as they share with us in just a few moments? Will you use their words? Will you use their voices? to glorify you and our Savior Jesus, and may our hearts be touched and reminded of the real meaning of this season. To you be glory, power, dominion forever and ever. Amen.
The story begins with silence. A long silence that lasted 400 years. Four centuries of waiting to hear from the God we worshipped. God had not spoken. No prophet had given us a fresh word from him. No king had shown us the way to him. We prayed, offered our sacrifices, and kept the festivals and holy days. But there had only been silence and waiting. As we waited, our people looked to the ancient text that told of another time of silence and waiting, when there was a vast nothingness until a great word was spoken and his spirit moved. God creating and breathing life into the world. We look to our ancient heroes of faith and the centuries of slavery in Egypt. We remembered the night of our liberation when the angel of death passed over. We relived the Red Sea crossing and are wandering in the wilderness when Jehovah was life. A succession of kings ruled over us, and the more we turned away from putting God on the throne, the more desperately we needed him. Finally, the nation was destroyed, not by enemies who conquered us, but by our own unfaithfulness to the one who had given us everything. Yet even in our destruction, God had promised we would not be forgotten. A son would be given, a savior would come. The silence would be broken and God would speak. Every longing and need we had would be met as his spirit breathed new life into our world. At last, the wait would be over. Every prophecy would be fulfilled. And the most amazing part of it was that the two of us would be chosen to help bring it to pass.
Who would have imagined that God would break his silence in the way he did? Or that she would hear his message from an angel's lips? He said, Don't be afraid, Mary. You have found favor in God. You will give birth to a son and call him Jesus. The Spirit gave me the words to answer. At the very moment Joseph was weighing what to do about my situation, he would be told in a dream, don't be afraid, Mary will have a son, call him Jesus. He will save his people from their sins.
Caesar's decree came at the worst possible time. Mary was nearing the time to deliver her child. Our journey to Bethlehem to register was difficult for her. Everything she had been called to do was difficult. Already she had endured scorn, mistrust, and danger. But when God called, she simply answered, yes. through the nine months of being an outcast and the target of endless gossip. Faith had given me peace when Joseph doubted me. Faith had provided strength and courage as we traveled to Bethlehem. I had faith. I trusted God. Still, I will confess that there were some moments I wondered about a God who would give such a task to someone like me. I have traveled many moonless nights, cold and weary. With 
with a baby inside and I wonder what I've done Holy Father you have come and chosen me now to carry your son I am waiting in a silent prayer I am frightened by the Lord I bear in a world as cold as stone. Must I walk this path alone? Be with me now. Be with me now. together be forever near me breath of heaven breath of heaven light in my darkness pour over me your holiness for you are holy Breath of heaven Do you wonder As you watch my face If a wiser one Should have had my place But I strong help me be help me breath of heaven hold me together be forever near me breath of heaven Breath of heaven, light in my darkness, pour over me your holiness, for you are holy. Pour over me your holiness, for you are holy. Breath of heaven, breath of heaven. Breath of heaven
Jesus came into the world in the exact way God had planned it, all along. In spite of the difficult circumstances, everything about him was perfect. Suddenly, there were angels peering through the doorway of the stable. When they saw Mary and me, and then the baby lying in the feeding trough, they came in, fell to their knees before him, and worshipped him. Many years later, John would write, The Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. Mary and I were the first to see it. Then the shepherds who came in from the hills that night caught a glimpse. And ever since then, people have found their way to him, one way or another. When they see him for who and what he really is, they love him. For what would we have done if he hadn't come to us the way he did? are falling, hearts are breaking, how we need to hear from God. You've been promised, we've been waiting, welcome holy child, welcome holy child.
We didn't know it, but wealthy men were already on their way to honor him. They brought precious gifts to lay at his feet. Heaven's son was worthy of even more. He deserves everything we hold dear. So we let go, we go, we let go of all we value, all we cling to. We lay down anything that would keep us from surrendering our lives to him. Because the truth is, he is the only treasure that really matters. How about that? All right. Carrie, come over here. Come over here. <clears throat> Carrie, you all have worked a long time. When did you start practicing? Oh, gosh. October. October. Yes. That's wonderful. And you've got a lot of people that, that come just to join the choir just for this event. And we just want to thank every one of you for this wonderful uh, presentation today because it reminds us of what this season's really all about. Lara, 
Thank you. And Sarah, you must have about 30 instruments over there you're, you're playing. Thank you, Sarah. Yes. We hope you have a wonderful day today. We hope that this uh, musical presentation, Lifting Up Christ, the real reason for, season will, uh, for the season, will, will stay with you and uh, encourage you and, and lift your spirits uh, all this coming week as we move closer and closer to the celebration of our Lord's arrival. And now may the peace of Christ, may his love, may his presence abide with us. May the songs we've heard today and the smiles and the voices, may it all bring us ever into his presence. Amen? Will you let the choir make their way out first? Give them just a second to come down the aisle.